Yes, that's right, folks. B for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, E for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Yes, they spell camel. Your taste will tell you about camel's rich, full flavor. Your throat will welcome camel's cool mildness. So draw up a chair for tonight's show starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Did you go hunting with your Uncle Artie Stebbins last Saturday? What did you say? I say, did you go hunting with your Uncle Artie Stebbins last Saturday? Yeah, and a terrible thing happened. A great big bear sneaked up behind us, grabbed Uncle Artie's gun out of his hands and stuck it in his back. What did Uncle Artie do? What could he do? He married the bear's daughter. Uh... <laughs> Never mind that. Did you, see any... did you see any big game? I saw a giraffe, but I didn't shoot him. He had a sore throat. Well, there's nothing worse than a giraffe with a sore throat. Oh, yes, there is. Uh, what? A centipede with corns. <laughs> You dummy, I didn't think you'd ever... I didn't think you ever went hunting in your life, and I don't believe you did. I'll bet you haven't even got a hunting license. I have, too. Here it is. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is no hunting license. This is a picture of Hedy Lamar. You hunt what you like, and I'll hunt what I like. <laughs> you, uh, hunter. Boy, that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, my brother and I, we used to hunt alligators. Alligators? Yeah, one time an alligator was just about to attack my brother-in-law. I fired off both barrels of my trusty rifle. Did you kill the alligator? See the swallow? Genuine alligator? No, genuine brother-in-law. I... <laughs> Talk sense. Come here, look at this. You see this picture? Now, I trapped all these rabbits last winter. Now, how many would you say there are? 876. That's exactly right. Oh, wait a minute. How did you guess it? Oh, I just count the legs and divide by four. I... <laughs> Costello, have you ever been in, Afri in Africa on uh, la safari? No, but I've been in New York on safari. I... A safari in New York? Yeah, the Staten Island safari. And also the whole book of safaris. Oh, no, come on, that's ridiculous. There's lots of safaris around there. Hey, listen to me, though. You should have been with me on my elephant hump. Oh, there I was, surrounded by elephants. One big bull ele elephant started towards me. I said to myself, I'm trapped. Abbott, you're trapped. Should I run or stand here and shoot the bull? You've been doing all right up to now. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> well, I shot. The elephant fell and broke a tusk. Broke a what? A tusk, tusk. Tusk, tusk to you two and a couple of poo-poos. Oh, no. <laughs> a tusk is valuable. We use 50,000 elephants a year just to make billiard balls. My, how do they train those big clumsy beasts to do such delicate work? I can see you, I can see you know nothing about elephants. I once held 100 elephants in India with an old acquaintance of mine. And an elephant sat on them. Something I gotta go back there. Why? To scrape up an old acquaintance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but did you ever shoot a, a zebra? Yes, I did. Could I have that zebra skin? Oh, what do you want with a zebra skin? My Aunt Minnie is an Alcatraz, and she needs a new fur coat. No, oh, <laughs> that's silly, Costello. However, I have a stuffed uh, rhinoceros you can have. Of course, you know what a rhinoceros is, don't you? Oh, sure. That's a hippopotamus with a red eater cap. No. <laughs> now, Costello. come on out there. I know you're breathing. All right. <laughs> Costello, this is the last week of the big game hunting season. Now, tomorrow I'm going hunting in the high Sierras, and I'd like you to come along with me. Oh, gee, thanks, Abbott. Say, you've done a lot of hunting. Uh, what do they call those little flies that buzz around the animals? Gnats. I asked you a civil question. <laughs> what do they call those little flies? Gnats, gnats. And gnats to you, too, brother. No, 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 you don't. Gnats are the flies that annoy the animals. Of course, some of them have ticks. Well, why don't they take the ticks and give those flies a good trashing? I, I didn't say sticks. I said ticks. For instance, there's deer sticks. The deer ticks? There's uh, certainly deer ticks. Who wound him up? Oh, nobody wound him up. <laughs> and what makes him tick? Somebody must have slipped a groon in his groove. Now, Stella, when I say... Listen to me, please. When I say deer ticks, I don't mean the deer ticks. I mean deer ticks. Abbott, let me smell your breath. Oh, come on, please. Talk sense. The deer has ticks, and the ticks bother the deer. They used to bother me when I went to school. Ticks bothered you in school? Yeah. Arithmetics? Mathematics? <laughs> And one time a tick got me in trouble with the teacher. Oh, now, wait a minute. How could a tick get you in trouble with the teacher? I ticked my tongue out at the teacher and she twounced the tweet of my trousers with a twap. Now. <laughs> Look, Lou, I, I'm talking about animal ticks. Hundreds of animals in the woods have ticks. That must be a pretty sound when hundreds of animals get together and they all start ticking at once. No, no, listen, Costello, listen to me. Deer have ticks, elks have ticks, and one time my father shot a moose with ticks. Now, do you know what I'm talking about? Sure, your father's moose ticks. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Costello, 
Uh, you're, you're getting more stupid every day. I don't know what to do with you. I, I don't know what to say to you. I've tried and I've tried to improve your mind, but I just can't seem to get anywhere. Why don't you face it, Abbott? You're a failure. <laughs> And here for Camel Cigarettes are Skinny Ennis and the boys with For Sentimental Reasons, Skinny on the vocal. I love you for sentimental reasons. I hope you do believe me. I'll give you my heart. I love you and you alone were meant for me. Please give your love and heart to me and say we'll never part. I think of you every morning, dream of you every night. Darling, I'm never lonely. Whenever you're inside, I love you for sentimental reasons. I hope you do believe me. I've given you my heart. The pages of American history are illumined by the names of doctors who worked unceasingly to overcome disease and to make life happier and more secure for humanity. The makers of camels are pardonably proud of the standing of this cigarette among doctors. A nationwide survey of doctors' cigarette preferences was recently made. Three leading independent research organizations asked this question of 113,597 doctors, doctors in every field of medicine. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Yes? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Well, here I am, Abbott, and I'm all ready to go hunting with you up in the mountains. Oh, that's fine, Costello. How is your hunting equipment? I got the best, Abbott. Look, Cornell Wilde's old address book. Costello, <laughs> honey, hunting is a serious sport. Now, suppose you came face to face with a big Bruin. What would you do? Ask him for a ticket to the Rose Bowl game. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, Marilyn Maxwell and uh, Skinny Ennis are going to meet us at the hunting lodge. And I hope you brought something along. I did. I brought a quart of bourbon in case somebody gets the chills. What are you bringing, Abbott? Mm, the chills. <laughs> Costello. Did you bring a gun? Oh, yes, here it is. This is my sawed-off shotgun. Wait a minute, where is the handle? How do you like that? I sawed off the wrong end. <laughs> well, come on, Costello. Marilyn was getting here waiting for us at the hunting lodge in the mountains. Let's go. Hiya, fat, flabby, and flat-headed. No, oh, no, wait a minute. Don't insult Costello, Skinny. Uh, don't be a pill. Skinny ain't no pill. He's too long and narrow. <laughs> Well, thank you, Costello. You're a capsule. <laughs> You're a funny-looking hunter, Skinny. Do you know anything about guns? I know guns inside and out. My man, when I was a kid with the circus, they used to shoot me out of an air rifle. What do you know about hunting? What do you know about hunting, Costello? Have you seen that big bear rug in my living room? Sure. Well, I shot that bear myself. What a battle. It was either me or the bear. Well, I'm glad it was the bear. You'd make an awful lumpy rug. <laughs> hey, look, Costello, here comes Marilyn Maxwell. 
And hello, Lois. Lewis, honey, my chubby little chuckling chipmunk. Oh, Marilyn, my sugar-coated sharpshooter. <laughs> Plug me with the buckshot of your kisses. Oh. Lewis, honey, how do you like my hunting outfit? Saks Fifth Avenue. Get a load of mine. Army surplus. <laughs> It's going to be fun hunting with you. What's your favorite wild game? Post office. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis, post office isn't a wild game. It is the way I play it. Ah, <laughs> oh, Lewis, my little snowman, come melt in my arms. Gee, Marilyn, when I'm close to you like this, I just can't seem to break away. Well, why not? My nose is caught in the trigger of your shotgun. <laughs> Well, Louis, if you'll excuse me, I'll go up to the hunting lodge and freshen up. As they say in Spanish, mañana o ya noches to you. And your mama's own nice shirt to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Costello, Costello, look up on that mountaintop. Now, there's a mother stork and two little storks. Yeah, Habit. Can I ask you a question? Well, certainly. When the mama stork talks things over with the little storks, who does she say brings the babies? Help! Help! Big pardon, Sanchez. There's a skinny hombre in your party. Uh, yes, there is. Why? Well, you better go over there and get him. A gopher just dragged him down into its hole. <laughs> uh, who are you, stranger? I'm the game warden. Yeah? What's your game, warden? <laughs> you want to know my game, partner? I'll tell you. It's par cheesy. But being up here in the wild country so much, I trained three little skunks to play bridge with me. Is it a steep game? No, we only play for a tenth of a cent. Ha! <laughs> uh, Warden, we're after some big game. Have you seen any uh, hereabouts? 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 Abbott, I thought we came up here to shoot deer. I wouldn't shoot a poor little hereabouts for anything in the world. Anybody that will shoot a little hereabouts and make a widow out of a sheabouts ought to be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> Shut up, you idiot. Uh, how about it, Warden? Is there any big game around here? Well, there's a ferocious mountain lion that has been terrorized from the countryside. He's been killing the farmer's chickens, and he's even been stealing eggs. At the price eggs are now, I don't blame him. That's a reward of $1,000 to the man that gets that mountain lion. One of you boys ought to trap him. Which one of us would you suggest? Why don't you try, Tubby? You got the biggest trap. Huh. <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, wow! Oh, 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 Hey, who are those guys? That's the Nebraska football team. <laughs> now, remember, if you shoot that line, I'll give you $1,000 for a skin. I need it to make stockings. What kind of stockings can you make out of lion skin? Nye lion stockings. <laughs> so long, Lord Head. <laughs> Hear that, fellas? The line's just north of us. Which way south? <laughs> Come here, you coward. If you're afraid, you're not afraid to take a chance, you understand? Yeah. I'll take this cane, you see it? Yeah. The lion won't bite you if you're carrying a cane. Yeah, but how fast do I have to be carrying the cane? <laughs> I ain't mucking around with no lines, Abbott. The last time I saw a line was in the Adirondack Mountains. What happened? I snapped at the line, then the line snapped at me, and then something whizzed past. What was it? Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. I hear something. Listen. I love you. Ouch. I love you. Ouch. I love you. Ouch. I love you. Ouch. Costello, what was that? Two porcupines necking. <laughs> Camel cigarettes bring you the lovely Marilyn Maxwell from MGM, producers of their Academy Award contender, The Yearling. Accompanied by the four hits, Marilyn sings Blue Skies. Blue sky smiling at me, nothing but blue skies do I see. Blue birds singing a song, nothing but blue birds all day long. I never saw the sun shining so bright. Never saw things going so right Noticing the days hurrying by When you're in love, my, how 
they fly Blue days, all of them gone Nothing but blue skies from now on Never saw the sun shining so bright Never saw things going so right Noticing the days hurrying by When you're in love, my how they fly Fade away, blue sky. Mop, 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 mop. Blue days, all of them gone. Nothing but blue. When you take your first puff from a Camel cigarette, there's a delighted response from your T-Zone. That's T for taste and T for throat, the proving ground for any cigarette. Your taste and your throat tell you you've made a wise selection. See how choice tobaccos, superbly blended and properly aged, give Camels a rich, mellow flavor that's extra delightful to your taste. See if Camel's own cool mildness isn't exactly what you've always wanted to suit your throat. Yes, millions say camels suit my T-zone to a T. You know, a nationwide survey of doctors' cigarette preferences was recently made. Three leading independent research organizations asked this question of 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Yes? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. All right, Costello. All right, now take it easy, kid. I'm right in back of you. Don't worry about me. Here's the mouth of the cave. Now, go in there. That's a pal for you. I let you go in and get the lion, don't I? You want me to go in and get the lion? Certainly, I'm your friend. Why don't you go in and get the lion? Oh, what do you mean? You want me to go in? I have a family. Oh, what I got? Never mind what you've got. You go ahead and get that lion. Okay. I mean, hey, what's I... the matter? You scared? Look at you. Your knees are knocking. I always knock before I enter a cave. <laughs> I'll take it easy. Buck up, Costello. And remember, make the lion believe you're not afraid of him. I couldn't be that deceitful. <laughs> You've got to think of those poor people who've lost their cattle and their chickens and their eggs on account of that lion. How can you face them, Costello? Think of it. How can you face them? When they may be starving. How can I face that lion? He may be starving, too. Oh, there you are, Lewis, honey. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I know you're going in that cave and kill that lion just for me. I am? Yes. And, Lewis, honey, I'd do anything for you. Why, I'd climb the highest mountain. I'd swim the deepest river. How do you like that? Here I am facing death, death, and this dame is going to go out climbing and swimming. <laughs> okay, I'll go in. But if that lion runs out, don't nobody shoot at him. Why not? I may be inside of him. <laughs> Gee, it's certainly dark in this lion's cave. Why don't you light a match? <laughs> Who said that? It's me, the lion. <laughs> what do you know? A talking lion. I gotta, I gotta tell Abbott, Skinny, and Merlin about this. Oh, no, no, you must never tell anyone. I'm a hermit, and I just hate people. <laughs> I wear this lion skin to scare them away. I live in this cave all alone. How did you find this cave with all the housing shortage? I subleased it from a bear that went on the road with the skating act. <laughs> you must get lonesome here all alone. Why don't you get a roommate? I had a roommate and milk. And then the meat shortage came along. <laughs> you mean that... You see the... this tooth hanging on this watch chain? Yeah. Well, it ain't mine. <laughs> Look, Mr. Hermit, my girl is outside. I promised her I'd bring out the line. 
Give me that lion skin and I'll take it out there and everybody will think you're dead and nobody will bother you anymore. Here, take the skin. Oh, goody, goody. Now I can be a real hermit. And then, I won't, then I won't be bothered by Lucille Ball, Betty Grable, or Marilyn Maxwell. Gee, do they call you? No, that's what bothers me. <laughs> hey, look. Here comes Costello out of the cave. Oh, my hero. Look, he has the lion skin. Who is the greatest hunter of them all? Bring him back alive, Costello. When there is danger, who's the one they call? Bring him back alive, Costello. Once I found a baby leopard with milk, I filled his tummy. And then in some magician tomb, I helped him find his mummy. He caught Tarzan, everything he knows. When in danger, he's not yellow. Who looks dapper in his hunting clothes? No one but my handsome fellow. One day I caught a tiger. I wasn't even trying. And in the movie house, I caught a Metro Goldwyn Lion. Brave Captain Deedee, a threat to fly Speedy, the greatest hunter of them all. Costello. Yeah. You've hunted a lot of big game. Tell me, did you ever hunt bear? I can't have it. The bushes tickle me. <laughs> Once I saw a mink, though, I saw a mink crying in the woods. I picked him up and I said to him, Though you'll be a coat full on the turner, laugh, mink, laugh. Though you'll be a lovely hat for Myrna, laugh, mink, laugh. Ex heroes, you'll have the best table. Think of those cold nights with Betty Shapiro <laughs> When you're on display at Bullock's Wilshire Giggle me, giggle All your cares will vanish if your tail will wiggle me oh, Wiggle me Depressed, keep your skin up. When you see Frank Buck, just look. Honey, my brave adventurer, someday you must take me hunting with you. I will, Marilyn, my love, and you can ride on my Papa Jackass. A Papa Jackass? Well, how do you know he's married? All jackasses are married. <laughs> oh, my hero, let's celebrate tonight. We'll go to the smartest restaurant for dinner, see the best show in town, and then visit all the swanky nightclubs. Then I'll kiss you goodnight and... <laughs> After you've gone and left me crying, after you've gone, there's no denying how lonesome I'll be, there's no one I'll see, until she finds another sucker like me. <laughs> Who knows he's gone gold better than a book, bring him back alive, Costello. Who'll charm a snake with one hypnotic look? Bring him back alive, Costello. I caught a baby penguin. He looks so awful cute. I haven't got the penguin, but I'm wearing his dress suit. Who makes the wildest panther is so tame? No one else but you, Costello. He makes the others hang their heads in shame. He's so groovy, he's so mellow. I catch a famous animals from every living herd. I even caught a Detroit tiger slaying in the third. Yes, indeedy, the petrified beanie, the greatest hunter of them all. Hey, yeah! The greatest hunter of them all. What a tough battle. But I won. Hey, Abbott, 
There is the line skin. Wait a minute, Costello. There's something phony about this. Turn that skin over. <laughs> I thought so. There's a label on that lion skin, Costello. Come on, read it. Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Atlanta, Georgia, U.S. Army Valley Forge General Hospital, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, U.S. Naval Hospital, Newport, Rhode Island, U.S. Marine Hospital, Staten Island, New York, and Veterans Hospital, San Fernando, California. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, a rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And here are Abbott and Costello with a final word. By the way, Costello, the uh, December 10th issue of Look Magazine has printed the pictures of your big barbecue party for the kids. Uh... Yes. Did you see it, Abbott? I did. I saw your picture, your wife's picture, your kids' pictures, and my picture. But I didn't see my wife Betty's picture. And I know they took Betty's picture. Now, where's my wife's picture? Why wasn't it in there? Well, the fellow that took your wife's picture couldn't develop it. Why not? He was afraid to go into the dark room with it alone. Oh, good yeah. night, pipe smoke Prince Albert than any other smoking tobacco. And that's a perfect guide to your choice of a Christmas gift for any pipe smoker. Prince Albert naturally. Prince Albert's rich full-bodied flavor and cool mildness spell Christmas joy because they spell lasting smoking joy. Crimp cut to burn cool and even. Specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. That's Prince Albert. Give the big pound package of Prince Albert with its special Christmas wrapping to all the pipe smokers on your list. Be sure to hear Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry Saturday night. Red Foley, the new singing sensation, sings American folk songs in a way that'll make your heart beat faster. Remember, Saturday night on NBC, Grand Ole Opry with Red Foley, the Duke of Paducah, and Minnie Pearl. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a tea. And remember, too, that giving a carton of camels is a specially warm-hearted way to say Merry Christmas to all smokers on your gift list. C-A-M-E-L-S. This is Jim Doyle in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for camels. Thursday night is another all-star night on NBC. Stay tuned for the Eddie Cantor Show, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.